Greetings my friends and welcome to a brand new nation's guide and today we're going to be looking at Austria, the Austrian Empire and as you can see straight away you can see where its position is absolutely slap bang in the middle between west and east it really is an absolute key, is pivotal pivotal point here within the sort of geographical location of where you could possibly start and it gives you both advantages and disadvantages. So we'll look first at, at where we start and what is around you, what the potential is, your enemies, your allies. Then we we'll sort of go into the economy, we'll look at the military. And we'll look expand, you know, and expand outwards and look where you, where you could possibly strike, where you could <coughs> possibly look to sort of invest your um, resources in your armies, um, who your potential enemies and allies are going to be. But let's start out with obviously what is key here and is where you start out as. As you can see straight away here, Austria, Vienna, the absolute hub here of the Austrian Empire and it actually you start off with a very very good empire in terms of your sort of w locations you have available to you so of course you've got Transylvania here sort of pushing deeper into the east here right on the border here right on the border of the Ottoman of the Ottoman Empire here that has obviously got Yugoslavia a good chunk of Yugoslavia under its control here the Balkans have firmly the the, uh, the Ottomans control here. You're at peace with them, which is always a good thing to have here. And you've got sort of Transylvania here, which is sort of this almost the tip of the spear here, the sort of tide mark of the Austrian advance. Um, and you've got, of course, then a potential enemy here. But we'll discuss that a bit longer. Just across the mountain ways here, just across a small hop and a skip here across the way. But again, you've got Transylvania with some good some good sort of e economic advantage here. Then, of course, you've got Hungary here, which does provide quite a substantial amount or a potential has a potential to provide quite a substantial amount of income to you um, then of course to the west here you've got Zagreb Croatia so of course you control as it were the last sort of the last sort of region within the Balkans that isn't under Ottoman control um, or Yugoslavia as it were and you've got Hungary then of course a very very pivotal very potent sort of position here used this stance but of course the absolute creme de la creme here of where you start or what is available to you in terms of production and, and capacity and military um, availability here is Vienna itself I mean look at that as it can that this can be an absolute gigantic behemoth of a production center both economically and militarily as you can see you've got a lot to do here a lot of buildings haven't been built but you do start out with you see with very very strong fortifications very strong fortifications indeed they are maximum fortifications so basically you're looking at inner and outer fortifications which is very very rare when you're first starting out even hungry itself here has those same fortifications as you can see they have absolutely Austrian Empire it starts out with a very very formidable defensive structure they've kept the core of their sort of empire Hungary and Vienna very close to each other strategically are able to sort of shift and move forces between the two depending on what the threat might be and that of course then allows you the defensive formation allows you gives you a little bit of breathing space in terms of being potentially sieged and that you know that you can hold up quite aggressively against quite a formidable sort of army hitting you with siege wise um, of course here you have um, Transylvania that doesn't have any sort of fortifications at all and then further <coughs> excuse me my friends further north you've got Prague here sadly no fortifications at all but again the the sort of the ability is there to po potentially push this into quite a, a fantastic economic center indeed and a fantastic production center and of course you do have Dresden here or Sa Saxony here um, under the Saxony sort of re regime as it were here in Dresden and then just across the way then you've got the Prussians who are sort of split between uh, Konig East East Prussia and Berlin of course the hub here of the Prussian Empire as it were split then with Gdansk and the Polish control so as you can see you do start out with a good spread of um, regions but they are quite compact but very very potent they have the ability that the Austrians to be really really absolutely a fantastically powerful nation very very quickly if you apply the sort of if you apply sort of the the, the monies you've got to start with which we'll have a look closer at now in the right places if you invest wisely if you invest in the right places you could have a very powerful army and indeed a very very robust economy and a very strong military very very quickly much quicker than most nations actually can act. so you know, the, the potential is there you just have to be able to sort of you know really push that money into the right places now let's have a look what we've got available in each sort of region in terms of <clears throat> what we can build what you can expand to what you can add what you can take away so let's start with the furthest sort of 
the furthest region we have here, which is uh, Transylvania here, Klausenberg here. Now you start off here with an iron mine, which is going to bring in 875 to the regional wealth. Not bad at all. That's still a good start. They're nice to have always have good to have a mine in your region. Then of course you've got the farmland here, peasant farmland again, bring 200 here. Enables the research of um, uh, common land exclosures and improved animal husbandry. Of course, growth of the population reduces the chances of food shortage, which is always good. But ideally, it's bringing 200 to the regional wealth, including the mine as well, looking well over a thousand here to the regional wealth. So Transylvania might seem a remote part of the Austrian Empire, something you may think, well, if we lose that, it's not a problem. But it's still going to bring in quite a lot of. Um, quite a lot of economic boost to your empire from the start so it's probably best not to sort of neglect it entirely and you do start off of course with the military governor's encampment because it is so far away from the center as it were it would take quite a while for any armies to reach you you already start off with the military encampment you're sort of the forward operating base of the austrians here almost sort of stabbing into the ottoman empire as you can see Bulgaria or and indeed Istanbul is not too far away as the crow flies it's not very far away at all and so you start off with the military governor's encampment and from there you can get oh look at that Austrian-Hungarian Silesgili Militia, Militia now I also have to um, remind you my friends that I'm using the AUM the additional units mod for Darth mods so it adds more units here so those of you who are using Darth the sort of standard Darth mod some of the units I am showing you now will not actually be in the standard Darth mod. You can you can download, I'll put in the description, link in the description, where you can get the uh, additional units mod, the AUM. That will add the units that I'm showing you now. So some of the units will be standard infantry, uh, standard units you can get with Darth mod. And some of them will you can only get with additional units mod. So some of these you'll see here, like for, for example this unit here you can only get with the AUM mod so that's why I'm sort of sort of clarifying that before we go any further and of course we can also get the, the Landwehr militia as well not too bad at all actually a much actually a much better a much better militia than this militia here but this one does look actually fantastic I do like the look of that there of course you get provincial cavalry you get militia and then of course once you've got the research available you can get 12 pounders you get field jaeger zoo preferred and also you can get carboneers here so I do do apologize for any pronunciations absolutely my pronunciation are absolutely horrific and I've butchered any over oh, insulted anybody with that I really do apologize my friends you're gonna see quite a lot of that in this particular video now so as you can see a very very strong quite a robust um, region actually so this is nothing to be really sniffed at at all and you also start off here with you with the usual sort of standard fare as it were when it comes to sort of standing start starting armies here you've got the general of course you've got a demi cannon you've got pikemen you've got a militia not enough to really hold off against a sustained assault but in the initial stages of the campaign it's more than enough to actually look and guard and keep uh, Transylvania well defended as you can see the Austrians really haven't thrown much into the, the sort of defense as it were of um, Serbia they've got a fort here but that's not going to really do very much uh, if you really wanted to push aggressively against the Ottomans you could actually move into Belgrade with this army here bypass but of course they've got the fort here so you'd have to have to work your way right the way around but even then the fort covers quite the distance here it covers quite the front so you'd have to pretty much assault the fort f face on and by that time they'd probably reinforce Belgrade quite substantially of course you've got the spy here as well which we'll have a look at in greater detail later but that's Transylvania now we're going to move on to Hungary you know Hungary really does have the potential to be quite the explosive sort of economic and military center now it may not look very much but later on down the line it can be very very powerful for you indeed now here of course you've got the peasant farms which of course it will need upgrading and you've got another farm here te tenanted farms but really key to this is this Fort Coman here now the number of battles I have fought against the Austrians this fort really does come into its own or when you've taken over Austrian territory this fort as you can see here can cover a great amount so it will probably cover a great expanse of the border here with um, any of the particularly Austria could Poland if Poland wanted to move down into Hungary it would have to tackle this fort first unless it came along the border here and attacked in Hungary but again this fort really can provide you with a substantial defensive system here so that's nothing to be sniffed at at all here and of course it does start off with militia and some pikemen here and also you've got a very good army here a good standing army look at that what a Prince Eugene, Eugene von Savoyen here what a wonderful general here look at that soldier from birth great general 
contempt for the Turks was absolutely fantastic fight against the, the, the Ottomans. This is the so this is the general one to lead any campaign against the Ottomans and brave soldier. So again, some great um a great general there with many traits from an excellent only thirty seven as well, so he's gonna be around for a long time. Get provincial cavalry, demi cannons, you get line infantry, pikemen and militia. Now, as many of you know, with pikemen, I'm not really a big fan of pikemen in most circumstances. Not to say that they're not good. I know that many of you do actually like using the pikemen. My own personal preference is I usually disband the pikemen. I usually like to put a line infantry or maybe even a cavalry regiment into the force instead. Because remember, starting off, you don't always have um, uh, a lot of money to start off with. And so you can sort of balance that out, as it were, by getting rid of the pikemen and bringing another unit. Um, so they cancel each other out, as it were. So... As you can see then, of course, there's another military governor's um, uh, encampment here. Again, because of the situation you have, I, I feel that the, the, the Austrians are really sort of trying to move. They are very militarized, as you can see. Got a huge amount of military presence in all of the sort of areas and regions. Infrastructure, of course, again, copper roads here. I think you've got basic roads. I think basic roads are in Transylvania. Did we need to actually check that? Let's have a quick look at the infrastructure here. Indeed. So basic roads are throughout the network. Again, upgrading your roads and upgrading your infrastructure is absolutely key to any campaign. Get that infrastructure up as quick as you possibly can. That will help the movement of goods and troops, guns, material, ammunitions across the roads here. It really does help a huge amount. It really, really does. And again, you already have um, a good army here as well. Pandors here and another demi cannon. So again, if you move this force into Hungary, if you were concerned at all that Poland might declare war on you and strike against Hungary, if you put this army in here, it could hold out against pretty much anything the, Austri the, uh, the Pol Polish could throw at you indeed. The Poles don't have very many powerful forces within striking range. So you could probably hold Hungary and indeed Vienna for quite a substantial amount of time, depending on what you wanted to do there. Um, so and also they've got the defences as well. Let's have a quick look at what we've got in here. 132 income, minus 10 growth at the moment. Not the best, probably because taxes are quite high. Minus 14 in population growth. Catholicism is on the rise. Um, Protestantism is actually on the decrease here. Uh, yeah, government is five, and the taxes yeah the taxes are high, so that's what's driving down the growth here in terms of economic growth, population growth is because of taxes, and also food shortages. So again, getting those farms up is going to be very very important indeed. That's really really important. And again, the standard military governor's barracks is going to give you, but here because you're in Hungary, you get additional units or the ability to build them. Look at that. Hungarian grenadiers, what a wonderful sight, look at that, what a magnificent sight. And you can, you can, once you upgrade to this military government barracks, you get grenadiers almost instantaneously. So in five turns, you'd you be um, producing grenadiers or recruiting grenadiers, fantastic. And then look at this, what a fantastic regiment. I'm going to probably say it wrong, but Varsadin uh, Cruiser Grenz Regiment, or Grenadier Regiment. But look at that, what a fantastic Grenzers are aggressive skirmishers. Uh, and I usually armed with a double barrel musket. Now that, my friends, is a wonderful line infantry unit. It really is a wonderful infantry unit, that is. And you can get them very, very powerful. And look what it gives you as well. You get Ulans, which are the charge on the Ulans is incredible. 29 for the charge bonus. These for these what are effectively upgraded lan lancers. Royal Hungarian Line Infantry, and again, remember, most of the units you're seeing here are from the Additional Units mod. So a lot of these units here are from the Additional Units mod, the Royal Hungarian Line Infantry, look at this. I mean, you can get some fantastic troops. Austrian, Austrian, Hungarian, um, Kurukus, Hussars. Hussars, my friends, what a wonderful sight there. It really is. Again, you get the militia, the militia. you get the Provincial Cavalry, but look what you can also get. You can get, if you get Light Doctrine, doc Light infantry doctrine, you get the Jaegers, which are very powerful skirmishing troops. Hungarian fusiliers, when you get fired by rank, look at that, magnificent. Um, of course, you can then get the 12 pounders and you get explosive shells, you can get three pounders when you get the same. But look at this here Austro Hungarian rifleman. I'm not even trying to pronounce that because I know I will butcher that name, but look look at the accuracy 69 accuracy. They are snipers and sharpshooters, skirmish snipers without peer. So in other words, they are the finest marksmen you will find in possibly any army, but you need machined rifling for that. And that is the the very last possible piece of research you can actually get, is a lot of machine rifling. Then you can move down here to the, the Lycana Regiment. 
again the aggressive skirmishes you jump into bar musket again um, you get the militia here as well but also got Hungarian hussars here as well good charge bonus light infantry or light cavalry should I say and they get carbonated so again if you were to upgrade Hungary into a military governor's barracks you're going to be able to have access to some fantastic troops very very early on so again that's a wonderful wonderful sort of potential that you have here from Hungary. Let's move on to Vienna here and as you can see you've already started off with a barracks which gives you standard line infantry uh, militia here but nothing else you don't get any cavalry at all then of course you start with a royal palace and which you can move up to an imperial palace which is the ultimate sort of palace as it were the ultimate sort of um, statement of intent and from there look what you can get you can get these Kaiser troops here absolutely wonderful you get the um, Austrian Hungarian Hazars. Look at the accuracy there, 44. Good charge bonus as well. Very good sort of scouting, skirmishing troops. You get the Pandors, you get the Albanian uh, Warband here. And again, a very, very good skirmishers. Independent troops, as you can see here, very good fighting troops. And, and, and they come with already experience, so that's fantastic to see. Um, and of course, then you've got the standard opera house. You can also build the admiralty. But again, you're landlocked here. Um, um, no, you're not actually landlocked. I do beg your pardon. You've got this here. You've got Triest here. This one port you've got here, which is coming from um, Austrian. And also, you've got also the potential here to have Zadar eventually uh, with Zagreb. So, same landlocked. That's not true. That was my mistake, my friends. So, you can be build the admiralty here. And that will help you in the future, of course, upgrading your technology and producing and making those really fantastic wash, you know. Line ships of the line, um, of course, it's fully upgraded here. Of course, Ordnance Factory is going to be really, really uh, important to you as well. Infrastructure, again, cobbled roads will need to be upgraded. But let's have a look at the, what you actually get within the Austrian here. You've got a school, Graz or Grads, which is fantastic, and it does extend. As you can see, look at this. Don't forget the Austrian. The Austria here, the Vienna, actually st extends right all the way down here, right to the border of Württemberg and it stretches all past Bavaria. So all of this is your land here. You've got the farm here. You've got another iron mine with meager yield. It's going to give you 700 to regional wealth. You've got another church school here, which you could convert into a, into either an economic or maybe into another school to re really boost your research. <coughs> and you've got a craft workshop here, which is going to give you 525 plus seven to town wealth uh, to turn per turn to town wealth. So again, your town wealth is going to increase by seven every single turn, which is absolutely fantastic. And then you've got a gold mine. It might be meager, but 1,200 for the gold mine as well. You've got two gold mines within a good short distance of each other. Fantastic uh, amount of income coming from there. The potential from this region is exceptional. And of course, you've got the farms as well, which you can upgrade. So again, Austria, Vienna itself here has a fantastic, a fantastic potential. It really, really does. And you're actually at peace with the majority of your neighbours. You're allied with Bavaria as well, which is excellent. And also Wittenberg as well, which is excellent to see. Now let's move on here to Prague. Again, Prague is sat slap bang in the middle here. This is the one region where it is sat absolutely central to Europe. It really is. It divides East and West Europe right down the middle here. And of course you've got the roads leading to here. And of course you've got the, the Bavarian trade coming in here, which I did forget to mention from um, Austria to Bavaria here, of course you've got the alliance, alliance with them which is going to bring in some trade. Now Prague, let's have a look, we've got Prague, of course you have to upgrade to barracks which you can't get at the moment. I don't believe it unlocks anything unusual, no it doesn't, usual standard fare of troops. And of course then you've got the Canna Foundry, you're going to need a Governor's Mansion, Opera House, so again everything here is basic, it is not up to the standard really of um, Vienna, neither it should be really because Prague is going to need a little bit of work added to it, especially some money spent on it as well if you really want to get it invested quite well in this. Of course you've got farms here in this region and you've also got here the coach in, good for spies, but also look what you can get, it allows you to recruit Swiss line infantry. Ju that's just from the plug bayonets, so from the very very first sort of military piece of research plug bayonets you can actually get Swiss line infantry straight from that and a very very powerful force indeed go rid of mercenaries then of course as you go down Hessian Jaegers oh my goodness me look at that what a wonderful sight there Swiss mountain Jaegers look at the accuracy 70 the range 190 oh look at that Swiss pikemen now the defense is absolutely incredible that really is wonderful there um, you've got Western European infantry mercenaries but look at that Swiss grenadiers 
Oh my gosh, they're exceptional. Look at that. The absolute creme de la creme Swiss guards with re with experience. Already these units here get experience coming with them. So if you keep the boardy house, if you keep that, it enables you to recruit quite a plethora of wonderful troops, but you have to get the research. This red circle around them means you need to research them. Research a particular sort of trait or research technology before you can get access to them. So in the case of Swiss Guards, it's fired by rank. In the case of Swiss Grenadiers, it's improved gr grenades. For these two uh, light, sort of light infantry regiments, it's going to be light infantry doctrine. And here, plug bayonets. Personally, if it was me, I'd get plug bayonets instantaneously just to get Swiss line infantry because these gentlemen will really, really add a solid, solid defence, solid backbone to your um, defensive lines. And again, you already have here an iron mine as well, 875 from that. You've got some fantastic facilities here. You really do. And then, of course, we move on to uh, Silesia here, Breslau here. Okay, you've got a good army here in terms of what you get here. Standard army, Pandor, Pikemen, Demi Cannons, and a general. I don't think general's stupid nephew. So plus two brown battles um, with mother's milk. Um, when you're battling against the Ottomans, so again, most of these generals are actually geared towards fighting the Ottomans steady under fire. So he's a very good general indeed. Got some good traits. Um, you start off with a governor's mansion here instead of anything sort of military encampment. But again, you can still get some provisional cavalry here as well. And if you upgrade to Governor's Panis, you'll still get the same here as well. So you're probably relying on troops coming from either Vienna or Hungary here to sort of reinforce. Um, or indeed from Prague, once you get Prague up and running here. I believe Prague has probably got a bit of a pardon. You've got Cobble Roads, you need to upgrade here. And here, again, you need to upgrade to Cobble Roads quite quickly. And look at that. Iron Workshop here, 600 to, the, to regional wealth and plus 6 to town wealth per, tu per turn there. So that's excellent. Um, of course you've got farmlands here as well um, and you can as I said upgrade that as well so you've got a very 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 good sort of starting position here and looks looks quite easy you might look back you might look at this and think this is going to be an absolute cinch this is going to be so easy to do this playing as, hung as hu Austria here you have no problems whatsoever playing Austria you better steamroll everything do not believe that for a second my friends this is one of the most difficult positions you can possibly be in it looks really strong it looks like you can just steamroll everything but look at where you are actually situated now we've gone through the advantages of what you've got you know, the advantages are you're straddling between east and west so you've got a good you've got a good position to be able to strike out against your enemies or you maybe you want to attack the ottomans attack the polish you can move out east or west north or south wherever you want to go so the position gives you the advantage of being able to strike where you want but also the same applies to your enemies. They can attack your empire from any direction. You are not, you're not going to be facing an enemy coming from one direction if the Ottomans declare war on you, if the Polish declare war on you, if the Prussians declare war on you, um, if one of the sort of the smaller nations here of Hanover, Bavaria or any of these Wittenberg, or even if one of the, if Austria or if, uh, France or Netherlands or Spain decide to grow here, grow really strong here, you're going to be facing quite a number of enemies striking you from different sides. Now, realistically, the most trouble you're going to get, the biggest probably going to get, is from either the Poles or the Ottomans, or indeed Prussia, but it's probably going to be the Polish or the Ottomans. So again, you're already looking at being uh, fighting on several fronts here. You've got them in the east, you've got the Polish in the east here, then you've got the sort of the, the Ottomans in the east, then they shift down to the south and then back into the west here. So again, you, you've you got the sort of this hook, almost this hooked sort of um, formation here of ed potential enemies. And believe me, they will, Poland and Ottomans will probably declare war. And there's a very good chance to declare war on you. So again, your, your situation here looks good at the start. But unless you invest, unless you actually defend or you sort of are prepared to p potentially lose a, a, a region or if you're def willing to actually pour in a lot of your money into your military, getting, getting your research up as quickly as possible, getting your economy, remember finding that delicate balance between your economy and between your military is very important. If you're going to spend a lot of money on your military, you must also be able to compensate what you spend on your military with also spending your, on your economy. Do not just blow all your money on your military and then when it comes to it, you're bankrupt after a couple of turns because you haven't invested in your economy. Invest in the economy. So if, say you build, say for example, three regiments of line infantry, then invest some money in a mine, for example, upgrade a mine. So maybe you'll upgrade the gold mine down here. 
So if you can upgrade eventually when you get that basic steam pump or upgrade a farm or upgrade one of these other buildings here, one of the workshops, so upgrade the workshop here. So that workshop here will then give you 900 to region wealth and 8 per turn to town wealth in, uh, every turn. And the same goes applies for this here. Invest in the Weaver's Cottage. Again, it's going to boost your wealth, your regional wealth. So say you invest in those three, those three regiments or four regiments or five regiments. Invest in your economy to be able to compensate for the regiments you've just built. So that you've got that gradual building of economy going hand in hand with military, and that eventually will see you good. It really, really will. Believe my friends, it's very, very important you invest wisely. And of course, we can, of course, you know, you can now have a look at the economic potential here, and obviously the starting position we have of Austria. Now, straight away, you'll notice you've got ten thousand gold. That is one of the largest starting amounts you will find in any nation is 10,000 gold here. Primarily probably because of your position. I think the starting position of 10,000 is to give you that initial boost, that sort of initial advantage over your sort of potential future enemies so that you at least got a, a, a chance of being able to hold against any extended attacks, especially if you're attacked by two nations together. That really is going to hurt you quite vigorously here. So let's have a look here, my friends, at what we got available to us here. So tax income is already quite high of three three four four. Then we've got trade of two three three nine. Again, excellent trade here. We've got trade partners of Italian states, Bavaria, and Venice. So we've got Venice here, are trade partners with us. Of course, as you can see, we've already got a good amount coming in there, and also the Italian states again. So we've got quite a bit coming in here as well. That's very very nice to see. I imagine that's probably over land here. Yes, it is. As you can see, it's going into the port, feeding into here, and then coming off there. So Italian states here, Ottoman Empire here. We've probably got road access with Venice. I'd imagine that's probably road coming in across the road there. The so Ottoman Empire here. So where does the rest of how is Venice getting that money to us? It must be coming through a different route here. Anyway, we know that we've got trade with Venice, whatever happens anyway. And we've got Bavaria here, and we've also got it, the Italian nations, Italian states here. So we've got, also got a good trade partners. We're allies with Württemberg, Bavaria. Oh, look at that. United Provinces, Great Britain, Savoy, and Westphalia. So already we've got a very, very good, strong alliance with many of the nations in the West here, but primarily sort of this primarily west of Venice and Munich. We've got a very good alliance with a lot of nations here. So that does suit us quite well here. Of course, other is 277. As you can see, our outgoings are only a 3650, but our income is nearly 9,000. On 8,500, 9,000, eventually that will be pushed up as you start investing in your economy. Now that is a wonderful, wonderful income you've got there. Probably really, really more than most other nations start off with. That really is, again, you need to got 5,000 per turn coming in here. So you're seeing affluent already to start off with. So look at our leader here, Leopold. Plus four demarcations, plus one to prestige per turn. Likes uniforms, you've got minus 10 recruitment costs for all in for all land units, which is fantastic. Pious, <coughs> autocrat, maximum repression, and majestic as well. So you do really have a huge amount of advantages compared to most. And I think that is to offset your position as well. That is to offset what you actually have here. It'll You've got to start off with a fantastic amount of uh, wealth. You start off with some very good um, uh, regions and some good centers. But eventually, if you don't look after them, if you don't invest wisely in your military and your economy, things will start to steamroll quite quickly policies now again your tax levels are quite high again if you want that growth you want to you want to start sort of moving the tax levels for the nobility down to improve growth and again move it down to Im improve population growth in the lower classes that's going to help a huge amount of course you'll take a hit on your tax but again eventually as the wealth increases for the upper um, so the, the nobility that will then trickle down into sort of the into the economy the wider economy so look at our ministers. Only 59% popularity are you know, very good, but again, head here is pretty good. Plus four demarcations, plus one to town wealth. The treasury is not good at all. Now you're an absolute monarchy, so in other words, you can actually move this gentleman out. Do we have any of the good ones here? Tactician, harsh reputation, industrial revolution. So there, once again, this gentleman here would be absolutely fantastic for the treasury because he gives a plus one to management of treasury administration. So again, Marcus Lichtenberg is excellent. And what about Balthasar Fuch? Pious and harsh reputation. Nothing for Tobias Schindler. 
and Jughead, plus one lower classes, minus one nobility, and Bon Voyant. So again, you could use Karl Feerbach, but personally I would use Marcus Lichtenberg, because his, his plus one to treasury would actually increase your global tax income, your growth to in trade income, and also the town wealth would increase here. Now, justice is good already, plus one, plus minus three to town cost, and also plus one to maximum repression. And again, your Secretary of War is excellent, minus two recruitment costs for land units, plus two for land military technology research rate, and minus two upkeep costs, which is always good to have. And, it's, and the same again for, for the Admiralty as well, minus one recruitment costs for naval units, minus one upkeep costs for naval units, and plus two for naval technology research rate. Fantastic, that really, really is. And trade, as you can see here, Bavaria is 791, Venice 771, and Italian States 777. Now, these two are over land, this is by sea. Um, so obviously the Venetian sort of income is coming via land. I can't see where that trade, where that link is. We obviously can't see it here for some reason, but it must be moving through one of these regions here. We just can't find that road that's coming along, but it must be coming along here somewhere, unless it's going through Bavaria, of course, which we can't see. But still, we know it's coming in from from that route anyway. So that pretty much um, our our sort of economic as well and also our military. Now we'll look for diplomatic relations here, a quick look at that. Again, you've got the ability here to already start trading with some pretty powerful nations here. Thirteen colonies are friendly with you, Great Britain is friendly, but you haven't got a you haven't got any trade with them at all. France is unfriendly for some reason because ah, we're alliance alliance with an enemy. And I believe they're at war France are at war with whom? That is strange. Ah, we must be in. We must be. In. Yeah, there it is. It must be because of Spain. So they must be al. They must be ally allied. Yes, allied with France. So Spain's allied with France. So that's why we've got the hostility with them. Personally, if it was me, of course you've got the Mughal Empire. Which have a look at the Mughal Empire. Starts out quite. Starts out very powerful, but remember the civil war that goes on here could be disruptive. Many of the ports along here can get raided, so if you get trade with the Mughal or even the Maratha Confederacy, please remember, my friends, that some of these, most of these ports during this war will get raided, which means trade will be blocked. It's best to probably trade with a nation you know that's not going to have their ports blocked, or can is able to deal with any of the trades being blocked with with you. So in other words, being able to move out in the enemy hitting the enemy, you know, striking back, removing any sort of blockades. That's where you want to look at. Potentially Britain, because they're friendly with us and they've already got, we're already allied with Britain, so that's going to be a good trade. 13 colonies, perhaps. Again, coming, getting that sort of gold from the new world, that new gold, that new wealth. Now, Prussia is unfriendly with us. That's going to be one of our key problems here. They're potentially going to turn on us quite quickly, Prussia. Poland are indifferent, but again, you could probably turn that around with a trade agreement with them. Maybe bring in some trade with them will help sort of increase their diplomatic standing with us. Um, so that's a real potential here. Personally, I'd go probably go with Britain, but I would probably do with, with Poland as well to try and keep them on side. And you've got the Ottomans who are very friendly with us. There's a chance that the Ottomans and Prussia are going to attack us quite soon. They will attack you very, very soon. Spain is hostile, but I wouldn't really imagine Spain's going to be too much of a problem in terms of what happens there. Um, they're at war with two of the native Indians. Trade partners are New Spain, France, and Genoa. Sweden are friendly as well, but of course you can't can't trade with these. Minor nations, they're not really, but of course Louisiana is indifferent to us. Unfriendly. New Spain is unfriendly, but again, the, the gold you can get from New Spain would be pretty, pretty important there for us. Pr Persia, they can be incredibly rich, Persia. Um... Savoy is very friendly. We don't have any we got lines, but no trade. So remember, Savoy is down here. So again, we could get trade quite quickly with them, maybe even over land. But again, that will be up to you, my friends, and wh whom you want to. Personally, I would stick with one of the major nations here, potentially Britain, because you're already allied with them, so you're pretty much guaranteed to get the trade. You can't get trade with the um, United Provinces because all their trade routes are fully a full at the moment. Or you could try the diplomatic route and try and get trade with Prussia and maybe with the Ottoman Empire to keep them on side, maybe the turn them friendly. The longer the trade agreement lasts, the sort of more friendly they become towards you. 
So again, that's something to look at there. Of course, research here is going to be pretty pretty important here. So let's have a quick look at what we can actually get as we move down this sort of the technology, the military technology route, because that really is probably one of the most important routes you can take here. So again, if we go to drill school, we can get a look at that. Third Heim Regiment. Not the best accuracy, but still absolutely wonderful there. And then we can get fusiliers, but we need fire by rank. The Dutch Meister Regiment again, accuracy is 38. Not the not brilliant, but still fantastic, fantastic troops. Um, then moving down, we can get the line infantry guards. We've got a new model planer, but again, that will be these gentlemen were actually quite late in the technology tree before you can get that because new model bayonet drill is quite low, quite far down on the technology tree. Expatriate infantry, the Haller Regiment again. Uh, we've got blunderbuss shotgunners, then you've got once you came Grenadier Guards once you get the new model bayonet drill, but look at that, what a magnificent sight there. Then the Sal Salm Salm Regiment and again they're this that they these are wonderful units, they really are. We've got so many units you can produce here just on the on even drill school. Um, the Leopold, um, well, like I don't, Curissiers, so the Curissiers here, and again, look at that, look at the defence, look at the charge bonus, wonderful to see there. Fusiliers Regiment, we've got the Harsh Regiment, Hazars, um, Gul Goyulai Regiment, oh my goodness, I'm butchering these names, you've got some fantastic, fantastic, more Curissiers here as well. Oh, Free Corps. Look at that, wonderful, wonderful. The, the selection you can get is so fantastic because some of these units aren't sort of up there with the elite, but being able to being able to input these units in and sort of being able to have a good composition with these, these gives you real scope for some excellent composition of armies. You've got Grenadiers, which are standard. The Vide Regiment here again. Um, you've got Free Corp Cavalry. You've got the uh, Alta Modena Curissiers. Fantastic. Look at the defence there, 23. Wonderful. Um, then moving further down the military tree here into the military academy, um, then you can start. Obviously, you've got the standard we've just seen here: Hungarian hussars, gain light infantry. But look at that, Grenzers, they look fantastic. Okay, actually, 55 there skirmishers. The Austrians have a lot of skirmishing troops. If you notice, sharpshooters. Then we've got colonial light infantry, buccaneers. You can use as well line infantry. You've got the fusilier regiment once again, line infantry guards. But again, you've got to be able to have that, that uh, machine rifling, which is the last, very last technology you can actually get machine rifling. So you don't actually get Grenzers until almost the, the sort of the the very, very late period in the game. Then you've got engineer again. You can square formation for that. The uh, cruiser regiment. Fifth, look at that. What a wonderful sight there. Royal Cairo infantry guards have to plug bayonet as well, so that's fantastic to see. Um, Curissiers, same for African infantry guards. Again, Curissiers as well. Different different types of Curissiers here. Um, most of these regiments you've already seen as well. Oh, look at the Highlander War Band. What a fantastic sight that is there. They would be excellent. They would almost as cannon fodder, but very good if you're going up against things like the native Indians going hand to hand with them. That'd be absolutely fantastic to include them. Fusiliers, but get fired by rank. And of course, Scottish line infantry as well. Look at that. That's a fantastic inclusion. But look how many troops you can get here. The composition, the mixture of troops you can get is so wonderful to see. Oh, the Karlstad Likana Regiment. Fantastic as well. They're brilliant. Ulans. So as you can see, the more you go down, the quicker you go down the te technology tree in terms of, of military research, as you can see machine rifling is the very, very last sort of military tech you can get here. 48 turns until you get there. Um, army board, and again, standard here. More as you've already seen, Hungarian Nassars. Um, light cavalry sharpshooters. Look at the different regiments you can get here. Cur standard Curissiers, Grenadiers, of course. Oh my goodness me! Breach loading rifle scoutmen, scouts, Royal Curissier guards. If you get diamond formation, <whistles> look at the defence on that. That is absolutely fantastic. Household cavalry, of course, which is standard, which is very very nice indeed. And again, you get an absolute plethora of uh, options available here. Some of you, or oh, mountain troops as well, good accuracy, good range. Of course, some you can't get until you open up. Let's have a look at what else we can get here. And of course, last but by no means least, Army Staff College, which is the absolute creme de creme. Air guns, look at that, air guns. So, get guards, um, you get generals, bodyguard, of course, hussars, ulans, 
everything now starts to come with um, experience as they as they come out of the recruitment as they come out of the recruitment school training school but look how many troops you can get look at the sheer magnitude of the troops you can get the composition look at these look at how many different regiments you can get Deutschmeister Salm Salm Haller uh, Thurheim Republic of Guard my goodness me you can get so many wonderful units as you can see the, the depth of the military for the Austrians is absolutely fantastic it really really is and where do you go with all this military once you've got this military what do you do with it or where, where do you where do you possibly can you strike obviously the the key the sort of the main sort of potential enemies or potential uh, enemies you want to be able to maybe push against or those you're going to see pushing against you of course the ottomans the ottomans are probably going to be the most aggressive against you and also the polish these are going to be really the main problems you're going to you're going to encounter as you can see here um you've got prussia which is unfriendly as well um Russia's friendly, which is always good to see, but the, the unfriendly ones are, mind you, the Polish are indifferent to you, so that's you're still positive with them, but it's either going to be Prussia, or it's going to be the Ottomans, or it's going to be, in the long run, Poland. But again, Prussia and the Ottomans are probably going to be, personally I think it's going to be the Ottomans. Now if it was me, I would start preparing for a war with the Ottomans, but also keeping a close eye on the other sort of nations around you here, especially in the Central European belt here. But I would definitely start sending troops to Transylvania and to Zagreb and Croatia because I can guarantee you the Ottomans will start to move against you before you even know it. Suddenly you'll be have war declared on you and that will be it. Also, getting some ships built, some sort of military ships here, some ships lying here, getting some fifth rates up to defend your port here is going to be vital because a lot of trade comes through here as well for the Italian states. I know most of it's via land, which is always good, but you definitely want to regard your ports. But personally if it was me I would get Vienna up and Hungary up into some kind of really strong production centers to in terms of military and, and the economy and I would start then filtering troops to Transylvania and, and Croatia but also starting to sort of look to defend the outer regions in Silesia and also Prague because with Pope with Prussia here Prussia would probably attack Dresden and then move on to Prague so you've got to be prepared you have to get your empire up as quickly as you possibly can filter out filter the troops down filter those regiments down into the areas you think you're going to see, see the most trouble probably the Ottomans probably Prussia most likely in the future as well Poland but my friends ultimately that is up to you and if any of you have told of fought as, as Austria please let please put your comments down below of what you've done when you fought as the Austrians because it really does add to the sort of the you know the sort of encyclopedia we're trying to build up here of these different nations of how uh, you are you as commanders many of you are veteran commanders many of you are exceptional commanders who really have put in huge number of hours into the campaigns here number of massive battles I know many of you have fought some absolutely brutal campaigns and all of that can help especially if someone is new coming into the Empire and they choose Austria because it looks quite a uh, quite a large empire as it were not realizing the strategic sort of positioning of what you need to do some of the things you need to think out before you do it because they can look fantastic almost on paper as it were without anything happening but as soon as these those enemies start throwing at you as soon as the enemy start to build up against you 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 must be able to respond and adapt quite quickly and that's where your experience comes in how have you been fighting it what what did you do did you strike out first or did you wait for an enemy to attack you how did you build up your military where did you position your military all these questions are, are absolutely fantastic so if you can get your comments down below my friends that'd be wonderful to see what you've done i hope you've enjoyed this, this episode um up next will either be a um great war mod um or it will be a russian campaign or possibly even a uh, Mukal Empire campaign I'm not sure quite yet um, unfortunately got a family illness at the moment so my time is sort of pulled away at the moment with with that so if you if videos are a little bit slow or a little behind a little bit on days I do apologize for that my friends but I hope you can understand some things just need to take priority there but I hope you've enjoyed this if you have please keep your comments coming down below my friends I'd like to thank everybody for their wonderful support um, for all the campaigns and, and, and for all the videos I've put out the, the support has been absolutely wonderful it really does really bring a big smile to my face it really really does and it really is a wonderful feeling to have such wonderful support i hope you're having a great week thus far my friends hope you have a great week coming weekend coming up be safe whatever you're doing but until next time my friends bye for now <laughs>